I want to welcome you this morning to Waypoint. It is wonderful to see you all here and to be worshiping with all of you. I'd like to welcome you all to continue to worship with us this morning, singing Victory in Jesus.
am so thankful that we can rest assured that you have bought us, that you have claimed us, and that we can be sure that no matter what is going on, no matter what happens in our life, that we are assured a place in glory with you because of your sacrifice. And Lord, this next song that we are going to sing, Lord, that, that, we are, that we know that even though it may not be well here, it may not be well in our life, it may not be well with our surroundings, but it is well with our soul because you have claimed that. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you that we have that assurance. Thank you for all that you have done for us. In your precious name we pray, amen.
Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say something about um, what this church family means to me and to my family. Um, over the past week, our church family has wrapped its arms around the Stewarts and the Travers over the loss of my sister's husband. And um, we're just so thankful for all of you and for um, what you mean to us. And, and uh, earlier, I'm sure all of you or most of you were here when we had the baptismal service and, and it, the connection is not lost on me. Um, when we lose somebody, it is a crushing experience. If you've ever experienced a, a close loss, it's sometimes you can't breathe. But, um, but when, you, when you know that that person, like what we experienced earlier and Chris mentioned, when, when you die to self and you're, when you come out as a new creation, we have hope. And, and that's what we have. And so even though there are times when it's hard to breathe, when you lose somebody, we know that this isn't the end. And we know that, that there's, there's so much more beyond this, this temporary hurt and this temporary heartache, because there's so much more beyond this. And this next song that we're gonna sing is called Lord Over All. And the, the beauty of, of serving a risen Savior is that he is Lord over our wonderful, glorious, fantastic moments, but he's Lord over the heartache too. And we can sit in that, and we can rejoice in that. We can rejoice in the fact that he, he's big enough for all of it and we don't have to bear it on our own. And so first and foremost, I just wanna say thank you for, for holding my sister up and, and the rest of the Traver family up when it's hard to stand on our own, um, but also just as we sing this next song, let this minister to you as it has to me.
And I love, I love the, the words that we sang. I love the songs that we just uh, got to, to sing together. And uh, Danette and crew had chosen those songs weeks in advance. And in uh, this past week, you know, we, we, we stand up here and we, we play instruments, we sing into a microphone and all that. But, but uh, you know, obviously we have ups and downs that the week uh, has for us. And this week has been nothing short of grueling for uh, the, the Stuart and Traver families on the loss of a loved one. And so... I love that we sang songs of celebration, but also songs of being able to say, God, you'll never fail. God, whatever happens, it is well, because my faith goes far beyond just, you know, the, the good times. It, it's, uh, my faith transcends all that because I trust in you, God. And that's, that's Danette's testimony. That's, that's, this, that's all of ours. And so as, even as we celebrated baptism uh, just moments ago, it is as much a testimony of saying, I, I'm a follower of Jesus, but it's a, it's a testimony of saying, I'm a follower of Jesus through the thick and through the thin, through the absolute toughest things that life brings in, into, into our, our time. I say, God, I trust in you regardless. God, you are my hope, and you will never fail. And so uh, with that in mind, let's do our prayer time. And this chance where we get a chance to talk with our Heavenly Father, He invites us to do so. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father God, we love you. And God, we thank you so much for the call that you place on our lives. God, we thank you that you never fail. And God, for, for wherever we are at in our faith journey, Wherever we are at in, in grief or celebration or whatever this, these past days have had for us, Lord, we, we seek you now. And God, we thank you so much that you meet us right where we're at. And so, Lord, I ask your anointing, your blessing upon us as we continue uh, this conversation. God, as we, uh, as we do this service after, after uh, doing this powerful time of baptisms, of people courageously, you know, putting a stake in the ground and saying, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. And this baptism is an outward sign of an internal belief. And so, Lord, we resonate with that. And God, we're inspired by their courage. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing upon us as we, as we do this service, but also as we do our life, knowing that, that we're going to have ups and downs. We're going to have successes and failures. But God, that you are there every step of the way. So God, we cling to you. We cling to you with our lives, and we ask that you would help us on this journey. We love you, God. And God, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm going to ask the ushers and those uh, helping us out by passing the offering plates to come forward and, and to do so at this time. I have some announcements I'd, I'd love to share with you. I get an opportunity after, after going in this nice, warm baptismal uh, to, to change into, uh, into this awesome Waypoint gear. And it's a reminder to me to share with you this, that uh, this, this gear is for, uh, still for sale. I think the uh, store is, is, was supposed to close on Friday, but you have opportunity today and probably today only, to, to do this. Find it on our Facebook page. And if you want to wear this uh, uh, T-shirt that says, You Are Loved, again, we try to, try to leverage this as a message in our community, in our region, and around the world. This message that God loves you and that we love you. And so this is a message that we seek to speak into to those around us. Um, next Sunday, just an open invite is uh, after second service is what we call our Inspire, Inform, Inquire. And it's an opportunity for anybody to come and to, uh, to be inspired by what's going on. We'll share some stories to uh, be informed and we'll let you know some of the latest of, of things that we're, we're working on and some things ahead. And then to inquire and uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions and, and to do that. So that happens right after uh, next, uh, next Sunday's second service. And then uh, 
Tonight is a very special potluck, and Mavis Sturgis has helped arrange this. We've got a special guest in from Rwanda, and this guest, if you've heard of uh, Operation Christmas Child, it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to pack shoeboxes and then to send them to places overseas to be a blessing to people. And so uh, this gal that is speaking uh, was a recipient of one of these, and we'll be sharing tonight. So uh, Mavis Sturgis is right here. If you need more details on that, see Mavis. All are welcome. A great opportunity to invite friends. And and if you're able to help with setup or cleanup, uh, we'd love some help. So contact Mavis on that. Also, uh, if you were this past week for the uh, dinner that we had here after the funeral, if you were kind enough to, to uh, create a dish, uh, c bake something, there's uh, there's uh, some pans and some dishes that uh, that need, you know belong to you guys. So just make sure you check outside the kitchen there and uh, and pick those up. And uh, just a wonderful ministry that uh, that that we get to be a part of and wrapping our arms around families that are grieving. Um, wanted to let you guys know the teen dinner and auction is coming up op October 28th. Details in your bulletin. Melanie Traver is right here and see her for details on that. But again, this is a time come and, and fellowship. We'll have food again. We love, we love our food. So make sure you're here October 28th. There will be an auction and this helps our teens do events like Spring Hill and Bible quizzing and a whole bunch of cool stuff. So make sure you, uh, you are part of that. Part of that. Quizzers traveled yesterday and uh, they studied over the book of Ruth and there were like 16 of our teens that memorized all their quotes for this uh, this great event yesterday. So hey, if you're a quizzer and travel, will you guys uh, do that and give it up for our quizzers? Okay, one last announcement I want to share with you guys is uh, uh, we love traveling uh, overseas uh, to our partners, and we have an opportunity to connect with our partners in Asia. And this is a place and a, a place that we visited before. People have traveled there, and just a great, great time. This crew is leaving in February-ish, uh, 2018. Todd Travers here. See him for details on this. Very, very important meeting takes place right after the service. So when we say Amen, have a great Sunday. Service is dismissed. Find Todd Traver if you are at all interested in traveling on this, this trip to, to Asia. And then I, I wanted to share with you just a quick message. And it's a message that is a continuation of what we celebrated moments ago. And it's, it's this message of, of, of baptism. And what is baptism about? And to me, it's, a, it's about a key word. And, and this key word is courage. Because baptism is an outward sign of an inward belief. And, and uh, we have opportunities to celebrate baptism. I was baptized as, as a youth before I, I uh, necessarily recalled uh, what was going on. But uh, when I was in my 20s, I made the decision. I said, uh, you know, I'd like to do this as an outward sign of my faith in God. And so I was baptized in a moment I'll never, ever forget. And I had friends and family there and just this great, great opportunity to express my faith as as a testimony to those around me in that way. And baptism is very much about courage, and God works through our courage. So let me say this, and uh, I'm going to pick up this. Oh, am I? Uh, let me try this. We'll try this uh, just a little bit more. Uh, and uh, it all starts at the very beginning, and, and it all starts with a simple fact of this, that God created us to be in a relationship with him. Okay? Cling on to this truth. Uh, may it be a foundation in your life, in your understanding, in your worldview. God created you to be in a relationship with him. He loves us. He pursues us. And in that, he also gives us the freedom to respond with love or to reject him. And this is something that God has done for each of us because love that's demanded or if we're some kind of puppet or, or you know, remote control robot and, and we express love back, it, it, you know, what does that mean when we're forced to do so? But God truly gives us freedom to be able to respond and we have this choice. Because, you know, if, if I were to buy my wife flowers and say, hey, Aim, I really felt obligated to give you these flowers. You know, I hope you like that. You know, that doesn't mean as much, right? But if I say, hey, I was, I was thinking of you and I bought you these flowers, I, I, you know, I love you. That's, uh, that's so much more meaningful, right? And so same thing in our walk with God. When we're able to say, God, I choose to respond to the love that you've shown to me. And so this is the way that God has chosen to do his relationship with humankind. But in that, through our sin, we in many ways have rejected God. 
and we've chosen our own way separate from God's will and God's word. And so whether it be a, a decision that we make today or some time ago or, or just because of who we are, we, we are flawed. We mess up. We sin. And there's nothing we can do to, to scrub that away. But God knew this, and he sent Jesus to live the perfect life and then to die on a cross and to rise again. And so then he takes our place, literally. And so anyone who trusts in Jesus has eternal life. And this is what we celebrate at baptism. It's not that a person is perfect and says, I'm being baptized because I'm perfect, but rather I'm being baptized because of God's work in my life, that I've needed this relationship restored and there's nothing I could do on my own end to do so. But Jesus took my place and I'm responding to that. And so God takes people who take this courageous step and live courageous lives and he turns us loose to, to have impact in this world and, and in our community, in our region, and uh, around the world. And this is the way that God has chosen to act. And again, God could do this all on his own. He could shout from the sky. He could perform miracles, and, and the whole world would be in awe and, and just would be compelled to, to respond to him. But God chooses to use us as his instruments, even as his witnesses, as you go to school tomorrow, as you're in the workplace, as you're at the grocery store with your family, you have an opportunity in the way you live your life as a testimony to the people around you. So our mission, Jesus makes it as absolutely clear as he possibly can. And he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And do you know what Jesus said? He said, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. There is nothing better that we can ever do with our lives than that. And the second greatest commandment that we can do with our lives, and Jesus again paints this as clear as possible, he says, the second commandment is, is this, that we would love our neighbor as we love ourselves. This is what our lives need to be about. And this is the testimony that we need to share with the world that, that God loves them. And, and this world is in need of God's love. And so Jesus, in some of his last words, he says this. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This is what God has called us to do. And he relies on people of courage to live this out in their context with the people that they're around. And so we have this opportunity, but we have this, this challenge. And I want you to, to pause for a quick moment and to think the people that Jesus said this to, okay? And this is, this is you know, some short time, just over a month after Jesus had been crucified, buried, and then rose again. So, I mean, a matter of weeks afterward. Think of the people that Jesus is sharing this with. Like, Jesus is giving his mission, some of his last words, and he's saying this to a group of people who weeks ago had scattered and abandoned him. Uh, people that, you know, you wouldn't describe them as courageous. They locked the door. They were careful who they let in. They went back to their old, uh, you know, occupations. You know, let's go. We got nothing else to do. Let's go fishing. They weren't doing the mission, okay? But Jesus speaks it to them. I mean, think of Peter, okay? Peter, weeks earlier, when Jesus had been betrayed and people had seen Peter and said, you, you were with Jesus, weren't you? What was Peter's answer? Did he identify himself with, with his Savior? Did he identify? Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely. No, he's like, no, listen, I don't know the guy. I, I'm not a part of what he's a part of. And, and three times this happened, he even called down curses. And he's like, listen, I don't know Jesus. I'm not a part of him. And Jesus weeks later, is speaking into him and he's speaking into us as frail and as flawed as we are. And he's saying, I want you to be my witnesses. I want you to make a difference in this world, in your context. This was the audience that Jesus spoke. So what happened? There's a transformation that happened. 
And this is what we celebrate at baptism, is this amazing transformation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, and it sums it up so well. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. What we celebrate at baptism is dying to our old selves and then coming up as a new creation. This is symbolism of this fact, of this work that Jesus has done in our lives. And it's compelling for us to be able to share, listen, I'm not perfect, but I've been transformed. You know, when we, when we celebrate baptism, it isn't the fact that, that this person is perfect. That doesn't, that's far from the truth. We're not it doesn't mean that life is going to go perfectly. We will have ups and downs, as everybody here can attest. But what it does mean is that Jesus has worked in our lives. And so courageously, a person being baptized gives that testimony and says, this is who I am. I've, I've aligned myself with Jesus and his teaching, and this is how I want to be identified. I am a follower of Jesus, and I want to live my life according to his will, according to his rules. I want to show love just as he has called me to do so. This is what we celebrate at baptism. It's this changed life that those disciples back in the day had. And then watch, as you read through the book of Acts, take a look at the transformation that happens. And there's so many statements throughout the book of Acts, and, and people were added to their number, and thousands were added to their number, and, and the, the church grew and grew and grew. And it happened because of God working through ordinary people like me and you. And this is our opportunity and this is our call today and beyond. I want to share just a quick, uh, quick passage, Acts chapter 4, very early in the early church. And again, just a short time after Jesus had, had been uh, buried, uh, crucified, rose again. Just a short time after this, Peter and John are out and about, and they're sharing about Jesus and what Jesus has done in their lives and what Jesus can do in other people's lives. So Acts chapter 4, the first four verses say this. And as they were speaking to the people, this is Peter and John, the priests and the captain of the, guard, of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. The, the message that they were sharing was so offensive to, to the authorities at the time that they had them arrested. They did not want them sharing about Jesus. Like, we've got to stop this. We've got to put a stop to this. But even in the midst of that, God used the courage of Peter and John. And God uses our courage when we, when we take a stand, when we're willing to step out in faith, when we're willing to stand for what we believe in. In verse 4, many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men who believed came to about 5,000. And again, the church grows and grows and God works and works. So, <coughs> so again, Peter and John had been put in, in jail and they were told, don't speak about Jesus anymore. Verse 18, you know, we're skipping ahead. You get in the Cliff Notes version of this. But verse 18, the authorities there, then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than to obey God. For we can't help speaking about what we have seen and what we've heard. Look at the courage there. They very well could have said, hey, you know what? We're going to get beaten for what we believe we're going to be in prison. We're going to be separated from loved ones. We're going to have trials because of standing up for Jesus. You know what? Yeah, you know, we'll tone it down. Would that be okay? You know, and that's, that's not the courageous life that God calls us to do. But I love their response and their answer. They're saying, hey, we've got a choice. Either follow you and obey you or follow God. Mm, God's going to win that one every single time. So we can't help speaking about this work that Jesus has done in our lives. This is who we are and who we will be. You can imprison us, you can beat us, which they did, and yet we can't stop speaking about this great change that we've had. We are new creations because of what Jesus has done in our lives. 
So as we celebrate Baptism Sunday, we celebrate exactly this, uh, of a person taking a stand in their faith, in their life, and saying, this is what I believe. I identify with Jesus, and this is how I'm going to live my life. And God uses the courage of his people to change the world. And so even after this, those followers, Peter and John and others, they got together and they prayed for boldness. They didn't pray that the persecution would stop. They didn't pray for an easy schedule. They prayed for boldness and for more courage. And this is what we celebrate today. This is the opportunity that we have. Regardless of where you are at in your faith journey, God is pursuing you. God loves you. And he wants to work in your life. And I don't know what, you, what you've been through, what kinds of grief or challenges or obstacles you've been through, but God is pursuing you. We just need to respond and watch God work as we say, Jesus, I want to follow you. This is truly the best way of life. I'm yours. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Not that we're perfect, not that it's going to be easy, but it's going to be fulfilling, and it's the greatest life. So I encourage you in three ways, just as we finish. I hope you are able to see the baptism. If not, we'll, we'll have it up on our Facebook page here uh, within a day or two. But be inspired. Because when people take a stand with their family and friends present, when they take a stand amongst their peers you know, in a public proclamation, that, that ought to inspire each of us in whatever ways we can live out our faith more. So be inspired first and foremost. Second is, chances are you know somebody who is baptized. I encourage you, as they took this courageous step, as they gave this public proclamation, I encourage you to ask them, why'd you do that? What, what made you make the decision to be baptized? I encourage you, regardless of where you're at in your faith journey, to ask them. And then consider being baptized. We'll have another baptism within the year. And if, you, uh, if God's tugging at your heart and you want to make this public proclamation, an outward sign of what God has done inside your life, you know, I'd love to have that conversation with you. Let us know. We'll keep you in the loop for the next one. But with that, let's pray. Let's pray for today, tomorrow, and beyond. Father God, we love you so very much. And God, even as we respond in, in loving you and loving people, in being your witnesses, in following your ways, Lord, we do it in response to your love, which you first showed to us. Thank you so much for the ways that you pursue us. And God, thank you that you don't let us settle for, for just uh, being timid. But God, that you call us for greater things in whatever ways that looks like in our context. Help us to be people of courage. Help us to be willing to take a stand for the things that, that you desire and that you want us to do. Lord, bless us as we go from this place today, tomorrow, and beyond. And Lord, help us even as we seek to be your witnesses locally, regionally, and globally. We love you, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday.